Cyberspace. My name is Garrett Mills and welcome to episode 3 in my Minecraft 1.7.10 modding tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to take a look at setting up our first mod item and importing it into the game. Um, if you haven't, I recommend you start at the beginning of this series so that you make sure you have all your files and stuff set up correctly. Uh, you can do that by clicking the I in the top right hand corner of this video. But as long as you've done that, without further ado, let's get started. So I've got Eclipse started up into the Eclipse folder of our mod installation. So before we get started actually working on this tutorial where we get our mod set up, I've got a bit of a correction from our last tutorial. So in our main mod file, above the, so this is in source main java, whatever dot tutorial mod main dot java. Above the pre init, init, and post init functions, we need to have that. So we need the event handler annotation from Forge Mod Loader. This tells um, Forge Mod Loader that these three functions should be called when the mod is loaded. So that's important, otherwise the blocks and things and items that we add won't get loaded in because these functions don't get called. So creating our items, it's important to kind of have them centrally located so that it's easy to find them if we need to modify them. So we're going to create a new package to hold our items. So we're going to hit new package and we're going to just, I'm just going to name it items. So there we go, we've got a new items package, and in that items package we're going to need a class that we're going to register our items in. So I'm just going to call it tootmod items. And there's our class. So in this class we need a function that we can call to register all the items. So we're going to just name it init. So we're going to have a public static final void function init. So this function is where we're going to register all of our items. Now in order to make sure that this function actually gets called and our items actually get registered, we need to call it in one of the proxies. And because items should be registered on both the client side and the server side, we want to call it in the common proxy. So in our pre-init stage of the common proxy, we need to call tootmod items.init. And there we go. So now any items that we register in this init function will get loaded into our mod as it starts. So we're going to get started actually creating our first item now. So Minecraft helpfully provides an item class that's pre-made so we don't need to define a brand new class for this, um, at least not yet since we're just adding normal uh, items. So first thing that we're going to do is define a variable. So this is going to be a public static item of name tutorial item. And so then we can import the item class. We want net.minecraft.item. So we import that. Now in our init function, we want to define this item and um, tell Minecraft what it is. So tutorial item is a new item. So it's going to create a new item. Now we need to set the name. So we're going to set the unlocalized name to whatever we want it called. So you need to use double quotes here, tutorial item. So that's going to um, that's going to define our item as a new item class, and it's going to set the unlocalized name to tutorial item. And the unlocalized name is basically just how um, Minecraft and Forge refer to this item. It's like its identifier. And now. There are a couple things that we can do here, but just for sake of simplicity, we're going to put it into a creative tab so that we can find it. And to do that, we're just going to borrow one of the existing creative tabs in Minecraft instead of creating our own yet. So we're going to do set creative tab, and then the creative tabs in Minecraft are under a class called creative tabs. And now we can look through here. So we've got the block tab, brewing, combat, decorations, food, whatever. So let's just put it in. Oh, well, let's just put it in redstone for no other reason than I want to. So now we've got our item defined, but it's not actually registered into the game. So 
The way Forge works is you can define all the atoms you want, but until you register them through the game registry, which is what actually injects them into the game, they won't show up. So we need to register this item into the game. So we can use that, we can do that using the game registry class. So game registry dot register item, and then we need to pass it the item, so tutorial item, and then the name. So for this name, we want to use the unlocalized name that we just set. So tutorial item dot get unlocalized name. So the reason we want to use get the get unlocalized name function instead of just typing tutorial item again in there is if we ever have to change the unlocalized name for whatever reason, say it's used by another mod or something, and we need to change it, it's way better to do it this way because I can just change this one string right here and it updates it throughout all the rest of the uh, code instead of having to dig through my code for all the times I've typed in tutorial item for the name and changed them all individually. So now that we have our item defined and we gave it a name and a creative tab and we've registered it through the game registry, we should be able to start up our game and see our item in the game. So we can do this by just hitting this play button up here and we'll see the scrolling text which means that Forge is loading mods. So we'll just wait a sec. Alright, so I just created a creative super flat world to just sort of test in. Um, let's do that. So, in our uh, code, we told it to put this item in the redstone tab. So if we go to our redstone tab, looky there. So we have no texture because we didn't set a texture and it's named item.tutorialitem.name because it doesn't know what to call it yet. So that's something that we will get to in just a minute. But the, the good news is we have our item. So it um, looks a little funny, but it behaves just like a normal item in Minecraft. So we can pick them up and they stack and we can throw them in a crafting table and they show up in a crafting table. So they just need a texture and a name. So now that we've got our item defined and we've verified that it is in the game, uh, we can set it up so that it has both a texture and a name. So the way Forge and the Minecraft loader handle names is they use a thing called a lang file and basically you create a file for your mod called en underscore us dot lang and that English United States lang file defines aliases for things so for example we saw our item was called item dot tutorial item dot name so what we would do is we would tell the lang file that anywhere that it sees this used in display, we want it to show something else. We want it to show the name of our item. So to do this, we need to create our um, lang file. So I'm going to open up a file explorer and navigate to wherever uh, we put our tutorial mod. So this is the eclipse folder, or not the eclipse folder, this is the root folder. So then we're going to go to source, main, resources and then we're going to create a new folder this is going to be called assets then in this assets folder we have a new folder and this folder is our mod ID so the mod ID for the mod we're working on right now is toot mod so we're gonna have a toot mod folder and then we're gonna have a lang folder l-a-n-g then in this lang folder we need to create a new document and we're gonna name it en underscore capital U, capital S, dot lang. So that's our lang file. That's where we will define the names of all of our items and blocks and such. Now while we're in here, we can go up one directory, so asset slash toot mod where our lang file is, and we're going to have a new folder, and we're going to call this textures. Then in this textures folder, we're going to create two folders. So we're going to create an items folder, and we're going to create a blocks folder. So this will be where we put our textures once we get to that point. So now that we've got all this done, 
if we go over here to our package explorer and we see source main resources over here we can expand this assets.tootmod lang and there's our lang file so we can open this up in here so in this lang file we need to tell minecraft what it should call our item anytime it sees the item dot tutorial item dot name string so first of all we need to tell it what string it's looking for so item dot tutorial item dot name so we're telling the lang file that anytime you see this string we want to call it something different so no spaces immediately put an equal sign and then no spaces immediately start typing the name so we're gonna call it tutorial item so there we go now we can start up minecraft and when we get into our game anytime where it used to use item.tutorialitem.name it's now going to call it tutorial item so the lang system of naming is very dynamic in the sense that you can alias anything that has a name anything that uses a string like that so item.tutorialitem.name so minecraft itself does this so like this single player button where it says single player it doesn't it's not actually called single player somewhere there's a string called something like i don't know gui.button.singleplayer.name and so somewhere in the Minecraft source code, there's a lang file that tells the GUI renderer to call this button single player. And so it's consistent throughout all of Minecraft. So now, if we go look, there we go. We have It officially has a name, tutorial item. So there we go. The next thing we want to do is create our texture. So textures for items in Minecraft are a little picky so we want to create a PNG file that is 16 pixels by 16 pixels that is all the more space we have to work with so you want to use some sort of image editor that is not Microsoft Paint basically I'm going to be using Pinta on Ubuntu if you're using Windows I recommend paint.net it's very similar to Pinta and it supports the full like transparent background and everything. So we're going to create a new image that is 16 pixels by 16 pixels and we want it to have a transparent background. So now let's just zoom in a ways. Maybe not that much. There we go. So now on here, there we go. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There. Now every one of those little tiles is one pixel. So now we will just create some dummy texture. So I don't know. Why don't we make it? Let's make it a plus sign. I don't know why. It'll just be easy to demonstrate. So we've got our plus sign. There we go. Ooh, better yet, I have an idea. Why don't we make it like the flag of England or something? Let's do that. And then we'll fill these parts white. There we go, flag of England. So now we're going to save it. So when you save it, you need to save it to that textures folder so we find the folder for our mod we go to source main resources assets then our mod ID then textures and since this is an item it's going to go in the items now when you name it it needs to be named whatever the unlocalized name is so we set that to be tutorial item and then we need to save it as a PNG file we hit save. Now we can close this. So now if we look in our textures file under items, we have tutorial item. So now that we've got our texture created and saved in the proper directory, we need to tell Forge to look for that texture so that Minecraft can load it into the game. So if you look here, I've added this extra line. So tutorial item dot sec texture name, and then here we've got a bit of kind of complicated looking code, but it's really not. It just takes the mod ID, 
adds a colon after it, and then the unlocalized name after that. So it's going to look something like this. So toot mod is the mod ID, and then the colon, and then you've got the unlocalized name. Now here is a misconception, or not a misconception, but just sort of a mistake that a lot of people make. You might assume, because we've set the unlocalized name to tutorial item here, this is going to be tutorial item there, when we get the unlocalized name. However, this is incorrect, because if you read the tooltip for this, we look, it says it sets the unlocalized name of this item to the string passed as the parameter prefixed by item dot, which means this is actually item dot tutorial item, which means that in our items directory, our tutorial item file, we need to rename it item dot. Otherwise, it's not going to be able to find the texture. So once we rename that, we should be able to load up the game because we've told Minecraft Forge that the item's texture name is toot mod, so mod bars mod ID, toot mod, colon, and then the unlocalized name. So now Minecraft knows to go look in assets.tootmod under textures items and find item.tutorial item. So now we can load up our game. And what it's going to do is once it reaches that line, it's going to go and find the item.tutorial item.png file and Minecraft is going to uh, uh, apply that texture to our item. So once it loads up, we should see our English flag texture on our tutorial item. And there we go. So now we have an English flag. So it behaves like a normal item. Drop it on the ground. We can craft with it and whatnot. So there we go. So that's about all we're going to cover in this um, episode. In the next episode, we'll take a look at creating our first block with textures and getting that set up. But for this tutorial, We've successfully scaffolded the framework to add many items to our mod, and we've created our first one and walked through setting up the texture and the name of it and getting it properly injected into the game. Alright guys, thanks for watching episode 3 in my Minecraft 1710 modding tutorial. As usual, I will be down in comments if you need help, if something didn't work, if something's kind of weird and you don't know why. Um, I'll be down there. I'll help you out as best I can. Um, if you just want to show off something you built, so maybe you built some really cool mod, um, I'd love to see that also. Or um, if you just want to connect with me, so you can do that on Twitter, on Google+, Plus, on email, via my blog. Links to do all that stuff are in the description down below. Uh, be sure to get subscribed so that you, you don't miss the next episode in this series where we're going to take a look at creating our first textured block and getting that set up into the game. And as always, thanks for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.